Retro. We have a ton to cover in today's episode, guys. We're gonna go game and toy hunting per usual. We have a couple projects to finish up in the game room, and we have to talk about the $1.5 million Mario, Mario 64 game that just sold. Sealed games and graded games are exploding right now, and upon a further investigation, guys, it turns out that we do have a game that is worth tens of thousands of dollars, and we're gonna dig in a little bit deeper to find out exactly what we have on our hands. What is up internet? Retro here and welcome back to another episode of The Retro Life. Basically the day in the life of a retro game and toy collector, buyer, reseller, enthusiast. Guys, I love all of this stuff that you're seeing behind me, but the way I've acquired it uh, is basically by getting it at, at secondary shops, uh, keeping what I want, and then, and then reselling the rest of it to, to fund the collection. Because guys, this stuff it's getting harder and harder to collect for, and in my opinion, that is the smartest way uh, to get all this stuff. We also have a couple projects in the game room uh, to finish up, and we've got to talk about the sealed and graded video game market. Uh, I cannot believe that one of the games I have uh, is actually skyrocketing in value. Can't wait to dive into that with you guys as well. Uh, also, I just got back from Southeast Game Exchange, guys. It was Awesome! It was an amazing convention. I got to hang out with basically all of my of my YouTube heroes that I've been watching for years. We got to talk about YouTube, retro video games, and just play video games almost every single night until about 3 o'clock. It was pretty wild. I'm still really tired, but we are about to get into today's episode. But before we do, if you do love all things 80s and 90s nostalgia, everything from retro video games, movies, toys, and more, do me a favor and hit that friggin' subscribe button. Every single Monday and Thursday, we're coming out with new retro nostalgia content, and I don't want you guys to miss it. Let's get into it. All right, y'all, we're back in the game room organizing because this place gets crazy. Like, gets wild. I just got done uh, adding these legs onto this desk. So this desk at one point was like way bigger. We actually ended up cutting off uh, a piece of it here in the back section to let it fit or make it fit right here in this little corner because again just don't have a lot of space and I just added these I what are these called hairpin I think something legs and now me and Tommy what's up Tommy throwback Tommy what up, what up? it's gonna stick at some point uh, we, we have some shelves we're gonna put up right along this wall let's let's get a look at these uh, they're acrylic and they're yeah they're deep it's like I think five, I think five inches, really hefty. These are nice. Um, what I'm thinking we're gonna do is we're gonna put them up. I think I have four. We're gonna put them all along this wall. And this first one, I'm really having to work around the switch, the light switch. So we're probably gonna do something where we're gonna go under it and uh, put magazines and stuff like here or like little trinkets and figures and still utilize this space by putting something like right in front of it. But something like that. So we're gonna get all these put up and we'll uh, let you know how it looks. All right, guys, I like them. I like the four shelves we have uh, put up. Lots of depth, gonna be able to put magazines and little trinkets and collectibles up there. Um, but I do have a package I wanna open up from Fire Spin Gaming. He's another game hunter on YouTube and I, this was a long time ago. I put up on Instagram that I wanted some Nintendo powers. I just never see Nintendo powers uh, where I live and he said he had some he could send me. So I thought about putting like Nintendo powers up uh, in the back and then putting things up in front of it. So let's open this up from Fire Spin Gaming. All right, y'all, we have quite a few. I don't know how many, maybe eight or so. There are one, two, three, four, five, seven, about eight or nine. So we got The Legend of Zelda Nintendo Power. That one is really old looking. Don't know how old exactly. This one is, oh, this is from 007. Confidential information, that's cool. Here looks like a no, this is N64 era. Killer Instinct Gold. 
best strategies cover to cover, okay? Then we got Nintendo Power, the comprehensive game, game pack guide. I have no idea. I guess I could put this right here since I'm right there. Here is another one. Ooh, Vice Project Doom for the NES. Uh, underrated game, guys. Really great game. The, the cool thing about these is just like thumbing through all of these old like ads and look at this. Here's a poster. What is that? Oh, it's Tailspin. Oh my gosh, amazing. So the first thing we turn to is a huge friggin' Tailspin poster that you can rip out of here. So these are just so cool. Guys, I wish Nintendo Power was still a thing. And we got Star Trek. Ooh, I like this one though. This one's going up for sure. Team and T3, the Manhattan Project. Dive into big city action. Like just putting that up there like that and then having some turtles in front of it. It's sick, right? Here is Mega Man and Dr. Wily's Revenge. If I'm not mistaken, I think they just re-released that game. Here is Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves. Probably the most uninteresting one so far. And then we got a strategy Nintendo power guide. This is pretty sweet. So yeah, these are all really cool. Uh, again, thank you to Fire Spin Gaming. I'll link his channel down below. If you're into game hunting, go check it out. So I think I'm gonna start putting up all the magazines, all the little collectibles, and uh, I'll show you guys after we get done with that. Guys, I think we are complete and finished with this nook area in the game room. I remember when I first moved in here, I was like, what am I gonna do with this weird space? It is so strange. You walk into this little five by five area. I, I have no idea. Uh, I, and I didn't know what I was gonna do with it, but I knew that I wanted to utilize the space. Ended up finding these shelves. These are the Atlantic Media Shelf. These are incredible guys, low profile, and they they just hold a ton of, of friggin' games, uh, obviously. This is the $10 game collection, all right here. And then over here is just a bunch of random media. Got N64 games, Switch games, a bunch of VHS. One thing to note, they do not hold clams, uh, clamshell VHS. Now that's probably not a problem for most people, but for me, uh, I do collect clamshell VHS, so I have to find a different place for them. Uh, but what's really cool, I didn't even plan this, guys. Check this out the door opens all the way and goes perfectly over that lip. Come on, man, you can't, you can't plan stuff like that. So I am really happy with, uh, with these shelves and they're, they're pretty affordable as well. And then moving over to the ones that, uh, we, we, we finally put up, I've had these for, for a while and they are up and they look, they look incredible to me, guys. These are great. They're sturdy and Again, that, that depth is what you don't see. Um, you know, I got a strategy guide here, an N64 game, and some knickknacks, and there's still, there's still space. I mean, look at that. They look incredible. I actually have some more to put up over the computer, but uh, that will be for a, a different time. As you can see, guys, I like themes. So we have themes all the way up these shelves. The first one is Back to the Future, my favorite movie of all time because it's the best. There's no there's no contest. I just love it so much. You got Back to the Future 1 and 2, and then 3 is actually behind it. These are the laser discs. If you did not know, laser discs are basically, uh, was the real fancy way to watch movies back in the day. Super expensive too, uh, but it just never caught on because I think the price was just too much, man. I think they were like 60 bucks for a movie. Crazy expensive, but they just basically look like, if I can pull this out, they basically just look like uh, records like that. And they are really, really rad. I'm not gonna try to put that back in because I will surely uh, drop and break everything, I bet. So I got one pop over here. Uh, I got Doc. Uh, I'm not a pop collector, but I did like that one. So I picked that one up. We got the Back to the Future animated series on DVD. Uh, got both, both seasons of that. And then I got the NES games, one and two and three, the hoverboard, uh, the picture, and then the little DeLorean. Moving up here is a bunch of Zelda stuff. I've had that Zelda, a link to the past strategy guide since I was a kid. Um, this is the cartoon. Yes, there was a Zelda 
cartoon, really clean, <coughs> excuse me, NES gold cart. Some of the Game Boy games, these have never been opened right here. These are Nintendo, Nintendo cards. Yep, it's pretty wild. And then my own personal uh, Ocarina of Time, since I had that since I was a kid, and I actually have a really cool story um, to this link to the past. I will, I'll just link a card right here so you can you can check that out. Uh, obviously, Firespin Gaming gave me that Nintendo Power. Moving up, he also gave me that Nintendo Power. Thank you again to Firespin Gaming. This is a bunch of turtle stuff. I love me some TMNT. Got all kinds of different figures up here. And again, I just think it looks really nice all displayed. And then up here is kind of just a random uh, assortment of different things. You got uh, a sticker book back there and then uh, puffy stickers. Who friggin' remembers puffy stickers? Super Mario Brothers back there. That's a sticker book. And then some other other random things, guys. I Again, I think this looks so good. Look at this area nice and clean and organized and then i actually finally just cleaned up the computer area now this isn't like the best job in the world i know there's people out there that are so good with cable management but i did like having these these legs to be able to kind of like bundle things to it um but yeah so i i plan the plan is to start streaming very soon in fact shameless plug guys you need to go uh check out my twitch i have a total of four followers y'all go help a brother out give me some motivation to start streaming some of these old games i got the snes mini i got the nes mini uh, and a couple other other consoles that i could start streaming and just hanging out with you guys and, and talking and playing games but guys that is it that is it for now i'm loving how the game room is shaping up there's always something to do in here to organize and to improve it and I'm, I'm really loving um, how it's coming along. So we just got to Goodwill, making my daily Goodwill stop right here, uh, looking for all things, video games, movies, toys, anything that I can add either to my collection or to buy and to flip. So let's see what they got. So first thing you gotta do is find out what the color of the week is which this week is green. Anything that is green is 50% off. All right, here we go. Looking through the CDs, lots of green. Uh, these will be a dollar each if they are uh, a CD that's marked green. So two bucks each. Typically, Kids Bop 33? Good grief. <laughs> that's a bunch of Kids Bop, man. What is this? Address unknown. Dude, it's got Gunther from the Paper Brigade. Morning, Gunther. Ready? The only thing I'm ready for is another four hours of sleep. I've never seen this movie before. Anybody know anything about this? It appears to be a 90s movie. I don't know what this is. Here is Matrix Reloaded. This will be a buck and then Matrix Revolutions. I'm gonna pick up both of these because these will be a buck each and I don't have both of these on DVD. So good first pickup. My Girl, classic. This is one of the first movies. I ever cried watching. Ugh, oh, so sad. Something I always do that I don't see other people doing very often is I open up cases that don't have any cover art because you never know what's gonna be inside them. And this one is green, so this is a dollar. And the ver verdict is Lost World Jurassic Park. Pretty cool, but not gonna get it. So here are three more that don't have cover art. Let's see what's in these. one <laughs> curious George next Elmo here is what is this planes fire and rescue so I'm not saying you're always gonna find something but most people are gonna make or take this effort to actually open these up I have found some incredible games doing this but in this case not today so it looks like nothing in terms of video games, like at all. I don't see, I don't see any video games. Here is a VHS though that I'm interested in. We got DuckTales, Lost World Wanderers. I don't think I have this one. VHS are a buck, so I'm gonna pick this up. Over by the VHS and there are a ton 
ton over here right now. Look at this. Look at this selection. And they are just thrown everywhere. So let's see what we got. Got the classic Disney sing-alongs. I actually liked this Leave It to Beaver movie back in the day. It's got Eric Von Denton in it. As they deal with light in the 90s. I got it. Cleaver style. Ah! Leave it to Beaver. Ward. Hmm. I'm worried about the Beaver. On video cassette. Just tons of Disney clamshells. Guys, there is a there is a an, an old wives' tale that says these are worth stuff. These are not worth anything. People ask ten thousand dollars for them on eBay, but they don't get that. So I don't I don't ever see those selling very well. But people think they do. Here is a movie I don't know anything about. Ooh, it's a Wonderful World of Disney movie. I don't see these very often, and I don't know anything about this one. I'm probably gonna pass. I might look it up here in a minute, see if it's worth anything, but for now, not terribly interested in that. Let's check out some of these electronics. Uh, alarm clocks, always a plethora of alarm clocks at Goodwill. Let's see what else. Keyboards too, mice, radios. Ooh, Marantz is actually a really great brand. Don't know, don't know if it works, but might be a decent pickup. That's actually a pretty sweet cassette player for $878. Y'all, look at that boom box. So this Goodwill actually has quite a few toys, but I have not been seeing, you know, very much in terms of retro nostalgia vintage toys at all. Like hardly any, but let's let's give it a shot. Here is an Avengers plane of some type, but very new, very new. Here's a Buzz. Actually, he's a decent little figure. My son has plenty of Buzz Light years at this point. It does say Andy on the bottom. Oh, I did miss this. Check this out. This huge Joker. Dude, he's pretty sweet. Look at this. I mean, I'm talking about, I'm talking, he's huge, man. Look at that. Be a cool display piece for somebody that's a huge Joker fan, and it is, ooh, 656. Hmm, that's probably not terrible. I may look that up too. Ah! Okay, he's not gonna stand back up, but I mean, that thing's ginormous. Let's look at these board games real quick. Ooh, we can build our own robot kit. Hey, here's an ET puzzle. This is cool. I don't know where they sell these. I think, I think they sell these at like Walmart, potentially. Let's see, it's been opened up. Ooh, yeah, 300 pieces. I'm not counting that all out, but kind of cool, kind of cool to see. All right, so now we're over by the books and I like going through the books. It's fun to kind of rummage through all these and see if you can't find any of those nostalgic books that you grew up with, Goosebumps, some of the old Nickelodeon books that I used to read. So I'm gonna dig through all of these and I'll come back and show you all of the books that I find. Okay, I moved over to Grandma's couch to go through all of these books. Y'all, I just found all of these <laughs> buried in uh, all of those rows of books. So we got a Nickelodeon Rugrats book. This one's a little bit newer. It's got Dill. Uh, I think this is dated 98, but this is actually two books in one, which is kind of cool. And we got Care Bears Easter Egg Hunt. You guys let me know what books you guys read back in the day in the 80s and the 90s. Here's Mary Kate and Ashley. Here is Babysitter's Club. There are babysitters. Oh, this is different from the babysitter, Babysitter's Club, maybe. I don't know. Here is the Babysitter's Club. Christy's great idea. I wonder who's reading these nowadays. Like, just sitting down by the pool, reading some Babysitter's Club. This is the one that freaked me out, y'all. This is a Goosebumps Pogs Collector Book. Uh, I guess it goes through all of the different Pogs in the set. Get out of town, man, that is sick. Uh, is there anything more nostalgic than this? Love that. Here's some classic Dexter's Lab. Kinda cool. Here's another Rugrats book. Paris the Movie, Sabrina the Teenage Witch. Come on, come on. I'm not gonna get this one, but just thought I'd show you that one. Good old Teddy Ruxpin. <laughs> These are cool, man. I mean, so this is just a tad before my time. Teddy Ruxpin, but cool to see. Here is Ants. Y'all, I like this movie. I was more of a 
uh, Bugs Life kit, but ants was still pretty good. But this is classic, y'all. Anna Morse. My cousin Rachel and I can become dogs, cats, tigers, hawks, anything. Pretty cool, right? Y'all, love me some Animorphs. I just got, I think I'm gonna get this just because it hasn't been used, but it's a Mad Libs Golden Girls game. So, you can probably sell that at some point. Here's Cat Dog. Love some Cat Dog. Angry Be Beavers time frame. Love both of those shows. These are cool. Do you guys remember the Fox, or do you remember these? Um, like cassette books. This one is the Fox and the Hound. Um, I don't think I'm gonna, I'm gonna get this one either, but really cool. Oh, look at these kids, they're enjoying it so much. That's cool. And then this is Michelle's Full House Scrapbook. This is wild to me, y'all. Look at this. Look at Jesse. <laughs> I love stuff like this. Uh, my wife literally just watched this movie a couple days ago, Clueless. She loves that movie. Now, here's something, I think there's another one too. Shivers. Do you guys know anything about Shivers? I'm assuming it's something like um, Goosebumps, based off that name. But these were at Dollar General back in the 90s, and I'm gonna pick those up. Classic Tales from the Crypt. Really like the cover art on that, it's kinda cool. Wild Thornberries, the movie. I uh, like that show as well. And then Pound Puppies, y'all. Pound puppies were king back in the day. So all these books are pretty sweet. Ooh, colorful, I like it. So these are 50 cents each. I'm, I'm definitely not gonna get all of these. Like I'm not gonna get Clueless. Um, I think that's just funny. I don't know. I'll figure out which ones I'm gonna get, but had to show you all of the nostalgia. Pretty good little quick stop to Goodwill, guys. We got a bag full of stuff. Always nice to pick up movies, games, toys, things for the collection, really, really cheap. And that's that's what you get when you come to Goodwill. And you gotta come all the time. You can't just come once a week, once a month. I hear people all the time say, man, I don't find anything at Goodwill. Every time I go, you gotta go all the time, man. I come to this Goodwill every single day. Sometimes I find stuff, sometimes I don't. You gotta be persistent. All right, guys, we're back in the game room, and I want to talk through this whole sealed uh, and graded video game market. It is absolutely wild right now. Now, this is not a new thing. Graded games has been around for a while, but uh, it was almost frowned upon at first. I remember when I first heard about grading games, I was like, that is weird. You're basically putting these games in a hard, protective case to never be opened and played. And it's kind of like, aren't games supposed to be played. In fact, I, I would love to know your guys' thought, uh, your thoughts about the whole video game grading process. Um, what do you think about the market? Is this insane that people are spending this much on video games? Uh, put it down below in the comments. Let's, let's get the conversation started. So um, recently, uh, as of just this last week, in July 2021, I don't know when you're watching this, but just this past week, a sealed copy of this game, Mario 64, a brand new sealed copy, and it was a graded copy, sold for, I believe, $1.3 million. And then with like the tax and the fees, it ended up being over $1.5 million. So I, I don't think it was like a different variant or anything. I think it was just uh, this game in the box, but it was sealed and it was graded. So, um, and it was graded a very high grade. So uh, again, why? Why are people um, first grading games and um, why are they paying this much for these games? I think for a couple different reasons. First off, um, these are historical pieces. Like this, this game I think is 96, so this is 25 plus years old. Uh, and then you go back to even the NES, Super Nintendo, you're, you're talking over 30 years old. So these at this point are historical pieces. People are wanting to preserve um, video games because they're they're historical, right? You can play this game on emulators. You can play this game if you just get the loose cart. You can play it now also on the Switch. So um, that whole idea of, man, games are supposed to be played is kind of out the door now because you can play most of these games uh, in other various forms. Now it's just to preserve the video game. Uh, preservationists. So I actually consider myself more of a, uh, of a preservationist. I love seeing the back of the box. I love you know, recalling those memories of being at KB Toys or Toys R Us and looking at the back of the box and seeing the game because there was not the, you know, there was no internet, there were no reviews on YouTube. It was just, hey, this looks pretty cool. 
uh, I, I want to play it. So kind of preserving those memories and then also protect these games. So I have a son that's in here all the time. He just turned three, but even when he was two, he was playing in this game room and I want him to play in this game room. So it, it, it's more my own fault, but he has opened up many things in this room. He has crushed many boxes, many things in here and has, uh, in fact, you know, decreased the value of some of my items. That's okay because I want him to hang out in here, but whenever you get things graded, they come in this really hard protective case and it is preserved for a lifetime. So again, this is not new. People have been grading collectibles for a long time. Um, the first thing I saw that people started getting graded were cards, sports cards, and PSA is kind of the big dog in the card market. So then we recently moved to video games. So there's two options in terms of video game grading companies, at least the two big ones. The first one is VGA, Video Game Authority. Uh, and what they do is they basically take games and they evaluate. They examine these games for first off, authenticity. Is it real because so many things are being faked nowadays? Condition, and then again, they protect them. VGA's scale is one to 100, 100 being the best. And then there's also WADA games. They do the same thing, but their scale is uh, to 10 instead of 100. So 10 being 10 being the best. And then also the advantage of WADA is they have a partnership with Heritage Vi uh, Heritage Video. That's where I used to rent games or rent games and movies. Heritage Auction. It's the world's largest collectible auctioneer, uh, and they have actually sold the last three games um, that have went for insane money. So here are the top five, no, six games that have sold in the past year or so. So a copy of Super Mario Bros. Sealed sold for $114,000. This was uh, graded. Um, November 23rd of last year, Mario Brothers 3 sold for 156,000. These are real numbers, guys. Uh, and then uh, another copy of Super Mario Bros. sold for 660K. And then just recently, July 9th of 2021, a copy of The Legend of Zelda sells for 870K. And then, of course, Super Mario Bros. 64 last week sold for 1.5 million dollars. Crazy, crazy. Uh, another thing to note, it's not just sealed games that are getting graded anymore. Actually, complete and box games are getting graded and even loose carts. So that's that's new to me. I didn't even know that. Uh, I started to, to do a little bit of research when I was wanting to make this video and I started to see that, man, there are a ton of games, not just sealed games, but even complete and box games that are being graded now as well. So what's my experience um, with grading games? Mine is I've only got one game graded and it was like six years ago. So it was actually fairly new at that time, but I got a copy of Zelda 2 The Adventure of Link uh, graded by VGA. Also, on a side note, great game. People hate on that game because it's so different from the first game. I actually uh, really like it. So I got this game probably six years ago or so for like $325 sent it into VGA, got it back, and ended up selling it for like $1,300, $1,400. So there's a lot of money to be made by basically getting sealed games. Uh, and if they're, you know, a good seal, if they're in good shape, sending them to VGA or WADA, getting them back, and then flipping them for, for a profit. So my experience was pretty good uh, my last time doing that. And again, this was a long time ago. So I have not really thought about doing this in a while until I have seen all of the buzz around Again, the sealed and graded video game market. So, what do I have? Why did I make this video? It's because I actually have a really nice copy, a very clean copy of Super Mario Brothers 3 sealed. This is the OG game on the NES, guys. Uh, made popular here in the States because of the movie The Wizard. Super Mario Brothers 3! Love that movie so much. Um, but this game is in crazy good condition, guys. I've had this for years. I actually got this probably five years ago at a Retropalooza convention in the Arlington area. And this guy had this game at his booth and it was sitting there. Again, graded games or sealed games were not really a hot commodity at that point. It was sitting there for like 250 bucks. I had a copy of Earthbound. And Earthbound at the at the time I think was selling for like 175, but they were selling like instantly. Basically, I went over to this booth, saw this. This is one of my favorite games of all time, and I knew that I wanted it. 
I asked if he would trade straight up for the Earthbound for this. I guarantee you he would not have done this now, um, but I kind of sold it to him. I said, man, if I give you this Earthbound, you're going to sell it instantly. How long have you been sitting on this? He said he had this at his game store for like four or five years. So again, people were not buying sealed games. He said, let's do it. So that's why I've had this uh, in, in the collection. But here's the thing. I have not wanted to sell this. I haven't wanted to. I wanted to hold on to it. But then this, this video game market is insane. It's crazy right now. And then I had some friends reach out. They text me, they emailed me, they messaged me. They're like, hey, I know um, you have this. Like they knew I, I had this in my possession and they start sending me all these videos and all these links to these games that are being sold for, for thousands of dollars. And they're like, now is the time. I know you don't wanna hear this, but now is the time to sell your Mario 3. And I think they're right. I think they're right and we're gonna do it. I'm gonna send this in to WADA Games to get graded. And I'm gonna have them grade this game and I'm actually gonna go with the Warp Zone grading service. So you can go Turbo, which is basically 120 business days to get this back. Speed Run is 35 days and then Warp Zone is seven business days. And I'm gonna go that route. Obviously you have to pay more for every time you go up in that service uh, in terms of how long it's gonna take. But we're gonna go uh, the quickest way possible and I'm excited to walk through this whole process with you guys. Um, I, I would like to get a nine out of 10 at bare minimum. They even go like nine, 9.2, 9.4, all the way up to 10. I think it's probably a nine. I'm no expert, but a nine would be amazing. And then they also grade the seal and they do any, I think it's like D, C, B, A, and then like A plus, A plus plus, I would love to get an A. So my expectation or my desire is to get a nine and to get an A on the grade of the seal. I think just there, uh, I could sell this for around 15, 15,000 on the low end, maybe 20. Uh, and then, but if I get it, or if I get this in the hands of Heritage Auction, they just get and draw a huge clientele for these types of items and the sky's the limit. I, I have another person that I trust in this industry and they said, dude, I really think right now because the market's so hot, you could potentially see six figures. Now I'm not holding my breath. I don't even wanna expect that because that's crazy, but even 10, $20,000 would be insane. So I'm gonna send this in really, really soon. Gonna get it packaged up very securely because I don't want this to get damaged. But again, I wanna know from you guys, what do you think? about this whole grading video game market. It is wild right now. Let me know down in the comments. As always, thank you guys for hanging out, for watching the video. If you would like the video, it helps out tremendously. Subscribe if you have not already. And until next time, peace.